Scabbed with layers of old coffee, the mug mutely asks, Is it Friday yet? The cursor blinks on cell G9 of an Excel spreadsheet. Papers are everywhere. In stacks and sheaves, pristine from the printer, and palimpsest with scribbling and highlighting. 447, the corner of the monitor says, 448. Don fills in a row of the Robert half time sheet page and hopes for the phone not to ring. 453, 454. He takes the small risk of closing the applications a few minutes early and opening the shut down window off the start button. 458, 459, 5 o'clock. Hustling up the hall and into one of a bank of elevators, Don quits the building, weaves madly through sidewalk traffic, unknotting his tie, agile and angry like a seaman stuffed salmon, plunges into a subway car crammed so tight they consider a safety hazard in Sobe Bore, races to his apartment door, taking steps two at a time, changes his clothes, eats some macaroni, watches two television programs, fucks his girlfriend, and falls asleep. 802. Don slinks sheepishly onto the 30th floor of the Wharton building, hoping no one will notice he's late. Ironic, this bother over being punctual, because with the exception of a couple phone calls a day, the occasional fax or photocopy, Don's job is void of content. This is common enough. Some mid-sized firm just somehow feels better hiring an underachieving college graduate with experience in access and PowerPoint at $15 an hour to come around and stare at the walls all day. Safely at his desk, Don turns over the possibilities, the mindless habits he's developed to kill time at work. Should he use the bathroom even though he doesn't need to? Make a stupid picture on Microsoft Paint. Facebook is blocked here, and for whatever reason, staring at his phone is frowned upon. But he hears a text buzz in and sneaks a glance. Why? It's Chrissy! Yes, Chrissy! Representing the somewhat embarrassingly named temp agency Temp Tensions. Why, Chrissy has an opportunity available with Gruel Co., a mid sized architectural firm specializing in the design of prison kitchens. Gruel Co. needs an underachieving college graduate with experience in Access and PowerPoint to come around and stare at the walls all day. The job pays $15 an hour and is located in the 31st story of the Wharton Building. The 31st story of the Wharton Building? And something clicks in Don's head right then. Yes, it would involve periodically running up and down stairs, but $30 an hour sounds a hell of a lot better than $15. He picked up the phone to give Chrissy a call. showed up early for work at Gruel Co. the next day. The bosses were impressed. They shook Don's hand. They took him on a tour of the coffee machine. They showed him where to deposit his ass, and they left him to read Wikipedia articles for the rest of the morning. Wasting no time, Don bolted on the hall, down the stairs, and to his job at Voidera, 30 short seconds late. Creeping carefully to his desk, he booted the computer, took the phone off send call, and before it even occurred to him to get bored, reflexively checked his phone, and a text had come in from Sally at Temporary Sanity. Short weeks later, Don held six separate admin temp jobs between the 28th and 32nd floors of the Wharton building at some $90 an hour. He had become aggressive in finding new positions after the first three fell in his lap. Don had questioned the guys on cigarette break. He chatted up admins in the elevator to see which firms hired temps from what agencies. Splugidia uses hot temps. Aquidia uses temporal lobe. Has your firm considered trying out tempura? And now Don's workday was far from boring. Don had found that Google Docs spreadsheet actually worked best to manage his time. He could keep it open to all six jobs computers plus his phone and spread small updates quickly to all those nodes. Each of the six desk phone lines were forwarded to dump into his cell phone as well. In a given moment, he could easily be in the stairwell, answering a customer called the bilge call on half-dress transformation between professional and biz cash, rushing to the 30-second answer and telephone summons from Lugidia's project manager to fax some papers to Montreal. But Jenny at Voidera on the 29th needed three copies of the annual report for her meeting at 2, and the office manager on 30 needed help stocking the supply cabinet by the end of the day. But $90 an hour. This was $720 a day. 3600 bucks a week, $187,200 a year. Don was blasting through a word merge on the already 10 minutes late copying the balance sheets they needed at 28 and 5 minutes shy of a half hour admin time being on 29. When a call rang on the cell from 31 with a request to come to Jack's office, Jack wanted to talk. Don, when I phoned you just now, you weren't at your desk. I checked before and after calling. I had a feeling something was fishy. Now this turns up. Well, I had forwarded the phone to my cell phone because um, I was going downstairs for a cigarette break. You didn't clear that with me first. I, uh, you're right, I'm sorry. I've been trying to quit smoking and I'm a little ashamed of it. 
John hadn't had a cigarette in four years since the day of his final exam in existentialism and phenomenology. Jack scrutinized him for a long, hard time, then stood, towering, dizzyingly above Don as he reached into his pocket for a, a knife, a gun. What was happening? Don was far too stressed, cold, sweating, and skin crawling. His mind was not working right anymore. Jack pitched a nicotine lozenge into Don's lap. Let's keep a low profile about this, huh? But I understand sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Don rushed down to 20 to copy the balance sheets, made it a minute late to the admin meeting. Afterward, he checked his voicemails. Temp Emporium, Temperate Zone, and Temp Orama had responded to earlier queries, offering admin jobs he had targeted on the 33rd, 27th, and 35th floors of the Wharton building. But Don had learned his lesson now. Losing no time, he called a new agency, a la Recherche du Temps Perdu, and placed a request to hire a clerical temp at 14 bucks an hour to route phone calls from home in a fast-paced environment. Don estimated by offloading calls to a subcontractor he would save two hours a day and improve FaceTime immensely at all of his positions. Then he contacted the Tempiporium, Temperate Zone, and Temporama to accept these new jobs. $108 an hour. And Don had not even heard back yet from Temps Ahoy about that opening on the 36th.